Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is our week 7 um, battle review of the NPCL. This is recorded rather late, you can see when the battle was August 13th. Uh, I sound a little sicky, I haven't been able to get to this. It is now November, now that we're editing this one. Uh, yeah, so uh, apologies, life gets busy. But um, yes, this is our review of our battle against Ross. Uh, and you know, at this point, you know, you're, you've probably seen the battle. We won this battle. We're going into the bracket with a record of four and three, and we are probably at the 15th seed. Yeah, they're going to be in the 15th seed. So, uh, yeah, let's go and review this. It was a very long battle of attrition. Stuff went right. Stuff went wrong. Uh, yeah, let's get to it, shall we? Let's play here. So. Uh, start off with the uh, Meowskarada versus the Sneezer, um, and you turning out, I was expecting the Aggron to lead, I was going to U-turn out anyway, um, but it was fine there as a move there. Oh, I should pause and make this slower, because this is way too freaking fast slow. So, uh, yeah, we U-turned out, obviously, we're not going to stay in against the Sneezler, and we bring out Gastrodon, and seeing this sub net set was pretty scary here. Uh, I sent out Gastron knowing he can take the hits. I Earth Power and I thought, oh, I fricked up because I'm thinking it's weakness policy. Though we don't see it. Um, and with the close combat, we lived the close combat and knock it out with the Earth Power. The crit did not matter because of reduced defenses. But um, yeah, we don't. I don't know the item on the Sneasler. We don't see any leftovers. We don't see any Black Sludge. We don't see Life Orb. So I'm kind of clueless of what the item was. Maybe it was like flying gem acrobatics or something like that. But anyway, we knock out the Sneasler, the big threat on uh, Ross's team here. And then obviously Serena comes in and we are up to switch out. We go into Celesteel, which completely walls Gashadon. And here we see a reflect. A very, uh, I didn't even know that Serena gets screened, so that's a very good thing to see there. And we see the Oka Berry as well, so really prepared for that fire type move coming in. We send out Gastro to just kind of sack, really, because I didn't need Gastro for anything more besides the Volcanian, maybe. Maybe that was a mistake there on our part, actually. Um, we see the Iron D going up, and I do recover. Um, that was not my intention for it, but I do know... Oh, see, it didn't even matter. The Iron Defense knocked it out anyway. But I think the key was to leave Gastrodon in. To I think it was to actually just sack. Um, but honestly, I probably should have saved it for Volcanian. Volcanian is a threat, even though I have Ready Drago here. Our team gets look. These three cannot handle Volcanian just based on typing alone. So that was probably a really big mistake on my part, losing Asher on that early. I sent out Morgrim next, just because I know this thing is body pressing. We can get our screens up and then parting shot after. Uh, we can even get some Thunder Waves off if we really wanted to. So here you see the parting shot, we're going to get out of there really quickly and go into Celestila. Because Celestila is built defensive, I uh, actually don't remember at this point, but we do have to reflect up, our defense is boosted. And then we know that Agrons like to be more physically defensive than special, so that's why I'm going for the Flamethrowers here. And Leech Sheet just helps to aid with that recovery as well. See, Flamethrower does a great chunk of chip damage, 30%, and we are just going to eat these body presses and recover HP in the process here. As you can see here, we're going to flamethrower again, almost knocking out Agron, but Ross has the rest of his sleeve here. So, he stores his health all the way up, and now it, I'm going to guess Iron Defense, Body Press, Rest, Sleep Talk. Guessing that's his move set there, but we are free to click flamethrower now. For two turns of free flamethrowers. I don't know what happened there, Agron was still asleep, so maybe there's no Sleep Talk there, but Alcon's okay in anyway, a, a very good um, switch in. And then we switch out to Reggie Drago, which is AV, of course. On this turn, it's a very evil sounding cry. But we see it's, you know, we're AV, we can take the hit, no problem, and encounter with an EQ. Uh, we, we know Florges is in the back, though, so, you know, we have to kind of watch how we play. Uh, EQ was probably, obviously, could have probably gone for D Claw. Um, oh, we do for D Claw now. 
and do a lot of damage on that Serena. We do outspeed Serena's. Oh, um, he, we did force the switch there. No reflex, so that's fine with me. We are going to switch out into Celesteela. Oh, so Cinder Ace now. We do see the heal bell, so Agron is now awake and can freely click that body press or whatever for free. Uh, we court change. I take your screens and uh, for no particular reason, I just wanted your screens. And we U-turn out of there into Reggie Drago. So we take any special hit coming our way. Oh, never mind. The reflect is gone. But that would have been cool if we took the special hit, right? Uh, we EQ and obviously we we'll speed again, right? So we're just gonna declaw for free. But Serena goes down. He leaves Serena in. So Serena goes down. No more screens for anybody. And out comes the Hypno. So Hypno, I really like Hypno. As a specially defensive Pokemon, I really like Hypno. So seeing this barrier, body press, rest, sleep talk was very scary. You can see D-Claw just ripping into this Hypno. And then we see the rest. So this was a very, very scary mod to deal with. And sending Meowskarada is also very scary because we do see that it's body press. Hypno as per Gen 9. So very scary stuff. Um, we go for knockoff to get rid of that item. And then we see it's a Cobra with the crit, so it didn't really matter. I think, yeah, it was a crit. Yeah, and then we can go for flower trick. So we see another barrier. So barrier, rest, sleep top, body press is again the move set. He's not switching out for whatever reason, but we can assume body press. We see the rest again. We go for Celestila. Uh, rest, body press. No, another sleep talk. So he can't really get off any move. I feel bad. He really couldn't get off any move. We are going to get our leech seed off here. To do little chunk of damage. Progressively doing little chunk of damage. Yeah, we landed too. Yeah, unfortunately he is not able to get any type of damage off on us. There's the wake up. There you can see him saying, fuck! And there's the body press doing a lot of damage. So that's why it's really risky with the Meowskarada. Uh, but you can see we're just going to recover health, slowly dwindle him down. See the body press again. We're not going to switch into Meowskarada. We're going to dwindle it down and then come in at an opportune time. I don't think burn affects body press because burn affects the attack stat, not the defense stat. And body press is more the defense stat. So there's the rest. We go for a chunk of chip with the flamethrower. And get, let's get some recovery off. Then we switch out here to Meowskarada, I believe. No, we go Morgrum. Oh, I see. We're going to set up the screens now to reduce some of that damage from that body press that is coming. What do we see? It's plus four barrier. So he's going to hit at max power body presses, basically. Uh, we get the reflect off here. And then we can go for parting shot to get the clean switch out. Uh, let's see, yeah. We're yeah, Morgrim is slowly getting its health back, so a very damaged Morgrim is now almost healed up. Uh, we see the rest again. And we switch out here into Meowskarada, I believe. Yeah, parting shot out, Meowskarada. Uh, yeah, what do you. Yeah, you're going for rest, and he can't get the move off. He just can't get the body press. He's only getting barrier. Good thing I didn't bring Dustnor. Dustnor would have been really good here. So there's the flower trick. Again, we're playing really risky with this Meowskarada strategy, but the crit, we're not going to kill it on the physically defensive side. So that's why I said Meowskarada, because guaranteed crit. And we're going to see here that it pays off. This risky strategy just does pay off. And uh, yeah, we knock out Hypno. Which is very unfortunate, of course. Um, but we were able to knock out the big threat there. He could have swept us if we weren't careful with it. And it was getting a little stally too, so I mean it would be a battle of attrition who has most PP at the end, right? So we go for a Pyro Ball here. Uh, Agron used Rest and then he switched out. Then we Pyro Ball... I think we U-turned out, right, this turn. Yeah, we U-turned out. Because we're, we're Heavy Duty Boots. We go into Celesteela. And uh, yeah, this Agron is still sleeping. Comes Ocanian. I believe we go for Leech Seed. Yeah, Leech Seed. There we go. So we're slowly dwindling down the Volcanian. Uh, light screen is gone, so we have to play a little carefully here. 
Okay, we're going to Drago. So Reggie, Drago, uh, we can click EQs to a little chunk of damage. You see how much it's doing? It's not doing much anything. Flamethrower was the is a harder hitting move. And that's because of Filter and Agron's really bulky defense. So we get the three EQs off and he goes for a rest here. Oh, he goes for Iron D, so I'm not going to be able to knock it out. So we're going to Celesteela right away, predicting the rest. Yeah, it's expected, the rest. So now we can just get our Leech Seed on again and click Flamethrower. We're going to dwindle it down. We, we, we have to. This team is very, very thick. And we got rid of the offensive prowess very early with the Sneasler. So um, the fact that we're forcing him to switch a lot and he's taking a lot of damage, it's working in our favor. Uh, so we're obviously going to switch out into Reggie Drago again. Here comes the Earth Power. So we took the hit. And then uh, we are going to click EQ. Yeah, let's get some chip damage on the floor just. <coughs> Excuse me. I said I'm taking a cold right now. The heal bells, the Aragon's up. And we're going to get a free Pyro Ball off now in this turn. No, not yet. Protect first. No, we tried switching out. We go for Pyro Ball, and we actually missed the Pyro Ball uh, when it mattered. And he's going to try to heal up that Aggron. We go for Pyro Ball. Oh, we go U-turn. We should have Pyro Ball there. So he's playing He's playing us right now really well. And you see, Aggron's back to full strength. We go for our Leech Seed. Of course, here comes his Iron D. Oh, he just straight up Body Press. And you see, it's not even doing 40%. Uh, that's how much the boost matters and look how much we healed. We healed about well, that's 12, 18% so we did quite well in the healing right there. We're just gonna click flamethrower right or earthquake in this game but we can't click flamethrower for free. We gotta preserve our PP. He goes a rest. Oh he actually just straight body press. And you see that does 52 at two times. We're, we're very lucky to get the leech seed off and get the recovery when we did. And we finally take out Agron with the flamethrower so down goes the aggron and we get our defense boost not that it matters anymore to rest our special attackers out comes volcanian uh, we switch on to reggie drago here comes that earth power which we can eat really well here comes our eq i believe we're hitting this turn yes yeah, so we almost take down volcanian with that one the earth power and I think we just let Reggie Drago go down because the earth power and just because we don't have any option to switch either so we almost knock out Vulcanian with the earthquake and we will lose Reggie Drago here to Vulcanian and then we send in Meowth Garada to just clean up the match actually because we outspeed both of them flower trick does a lot of damage to both of them so down goes you know Vulcanian and then Florges who took some damage earlier from the EQ uh, we'll go down to this flower trick here. Uh, maybe one more. What are you going for? Heal Bell. I wonder if he had Moonblast. Because uh, he, he he did... I needed to win strongly to win. Uh, so if he Moonblasted, he probably could have... Uh, he probably could have... Differentials, you know? Uh, you see the Hypno caught me off guard. But yeah, we're, with this one, we get into the bracket. I think if he Moonblasted and knocked out Meowth Garada, I think... I, even though I won, I don't think I would have make the bracket still based on points um, so I don't know maybe I don't know how they calculated all the win is stronger than points but if he moon blasted me there and beat me off Skirata, um, I think he would have gone into the bracket over me so I think I'm very fortunate there uh, that he clicked kill bell instead but yeah with this win here we go into the top 16 bracket uh, which we are facing against the Lavender Town Lipherds next, so that'll be a fun one. Um, but yeah, no spoilers for me. Um, we'll see what happens uh, next time. You know, we have Team Builder and all the battles coming up and the uh, review after. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.